Being a fireman is the best job in the world. Um, it means that every single day that I come to work, I know that I'm going to help somebody, whether it's in a small way or a big way. It's hard work. Um, it takes a lot of training and a lot of practice to get good at what we do, but it's always worth it. But all the hard work we do, all the training we do, it's worth it. Because at the end of the day, we could end up saving somebody's life, or at least helping them in some small way. My name is Peter Lee. I'm a fireman with the Yangwood Fire Department. All right, looks like a container box. I'm gonna pass it. Oh, they can't come up that ramp. Hey Lou, I'm a deck gun this, all right? Yeah. Yep. Hey, rescue, choke off traffic right there. Stop traffic. Hey, Krause, you ready? Here comes the water. Can you unhook this thing and get your trailer up? I can't pull that pin. Where is it? The pin is above the tire. And is it is it uh, between the tire and the uh, the tractor trailer? Yes. All right, so you can't get to it. I can't pull that pin. All right, never mind. Don't worry, we won't let anything happen to it. That was a good knock. Yeah. I think we slowed it down a lot. As soon as he gives me water, you'll have water. Yeah, I can go back. Right yep. Hey, maybe from right here? I, I'll let you side. Okay. Yeah. As soon as I get water, I'm gonna have to share it, but I don't think I'm gonna share it. It's not too smart. How's your air? Yeah. How about you? You good? All right. I to make a. I went in here. I hear you. Yeah, but he's only going to throw a French until we should really get that full three tanker out here. Yes. So that's about 200 gallons of water. So just because now you're got to take the test. What is this here? Yeah. Oh, it is shrimp. I'm literally walking at seafood. Basically, sandbag shoulder toss. Like so, if I'm partners with Corey, if I'm partners with Corey, I'm gonna do my ten uh, shoulder tosses. My childhood dream is that I wanted to be a Hollywood stuntman. <laughs> um, but I didn't know what that meant as a kid. I don't know why I ever wanted to do that, but for some reason in my head, I thought that that was really, really cool. I guess I am sort of a stunt man in this job, but you know, I get to do all those things that your parents tell you you're not supposed to do. Break windows, kick down doors, crawl into burning buildings. I guess it's sort of the same thing, you know? Except instead of doing it for fun, I'm doing it to help people. All right, figure out a partner, find a spot. Start in a minute.
So it's a 30 pound vest. Mm. It's, the, it's about the same weight as a restriction as some of the gear we wear. So we exercise with them on if able to. So it more closely mimics and matches some of the conditions we're going to get out on the fire ground. This is a 20 pound vest, mm. and uh, that's a 70 pound sandbag. The first time I ever stepped foot in the firehouse is when I was 23. I was pretty much an adult when I figured out that I wanted to be a firefighter. 16 years ago, uh, I first started out as a volunteer in Mawa, New Jersey, and as soon as I finished the fire academy and went into my first fire, I was absolutely hooked. So at the Fire Academy you get your basic training, everything that you need to fundamentally understand what a firefighter should do inside of a burning building. When you're inside of a burning building uh, as a firefighter, you have on all this protective equipment. We have a breathing protection, we have our thermal protection, we have protection on our hands, our feet. We're almost totally encapsulated, but that means you can't hear anything. That means you can hardly see anything because of the smoke. That means you can hardly feel anything because you have very thick gloves on. So all your senses are taken away from you. That was a very weird feeling. And then the heat. The heat from the fire. It almost feels like somebody has a, like a, a hair dryer to the back of your neck. The heat is so hot that it pushes you right to the ground. And that's something that I wasn't expecting until the very first time, actually being pushed right to my hands and knees onto the ground because of the heat. But as soon as we opened up that hose line, as soon as we started putting water inside of that hot building, we were able to cool it down, the smoke lifted up, we were able to go a little bit further and eventually extinguish, extinguish the fire. At the fire academy, the most difficult thing that I actually didn't expect was the academic side of it. There's actually a lot of reading that you have to do um, and you have to pass the state midterm and the state final examination before you can get certified. The city of Englewood's a very, very diverse city from the people to the types of buildings that we have. When you're talking to a firefighter and you ask them what, do you, what kind of city do you work for, what, what does your fire department generally do, the answer is usually based on what kind of buildings and what kind of geography we have. For example, we have local streets, we have highways, we have an interstate as well. So we have a lot of car accidents that we respond to. Anytime there's an electrical emergency that threatens the, somebody's property, any weather emergency where there's heavy winds, where trees fall down on houses or trees fall down on power lines, we respond and we help out with that too. Yeah, it's a gray building on the right. Fire department, anybody home? Fire department. Hello. Anybody here? Hey, do me a favor, stay outside. Yeah, I'm looking for it. Fire department, anybody here? Nothing. It's kind of funny though, because they were like hanging out in the backyard. I know, I just walked around. So. Alright. All right. Ah, false alarm. So, looks like the gentleman's alarm company had some sort of trouble signal coming from his house. They called, he didn't answer. Just to be sure, they called us to respond, make sure everything's okay. And everything's okay. Another job well done. The 
Englewood Fire Department originally was organized sometime in the late 1800s, uh, I think around 1888. Currently we have 48 uniformed personnel, so that includes myself as well as uh, captains, lieutenants, and firefighters, and we have four civilian staff. We work a 24-hour shift uh, from 8 a.m. to 8 a.m. My routine is I check my air pack first, then I check all my gear, and then I check my fire engine. I make sure everything is working exactly as it should. If I need to go to a fire right there and then, I want to make sure that everything is working exactly how it should so that it could, I can depend on it. In this department, we refer to our shift or our platoon as the group of people that work together. We, we refer to it as a platoon. I work on the second platoon, which is the best platoon on the entire department. Um, I work for the best bosses and I work with the best firemen. I love working with my guys because they put out 100% effort every single time. Peter is a very good firefighter. He shows a great deal of interest in, in this profession. Uh, he takes great pride in it and, and uh, is constantly interested in learning. And uh, aside from being a, a, a very good firefighter, he's a very good person. Uh, Peter's awesome. He's uh, definitely a great guy to have down here. Uh, loves to train, loves to teach the new guys. Uh, definitely trust him 100%. He's definitely someone I look towards to learn. If I have questions, mm -hmm. I like. I feel like sometimes I bother him because I'm always asking him questions. But I know he appreciates it. And mm -hmm. He, I think, likes that we ask him things because he is very knowledgeable. When we need each other, it's there. When we need to trust each other, we already trust each other. We're, we don't have to take unknown risks because we already know each other well and because we've worked hard together. Um, and that's special. You don't get that with every other kind of job. There's a, like a drill prop that we use. So we're just putting it up that door. So when we do drill, we're gonna be using this. Ready? All right, so figure out who's gonna go first. We'll just set up the door for you. Outward swinging. Outward swinging. All right. Hey, Kraus, you understand where you're going? All right. Nice. When I was growing up, I saw the fire trucks, but I didn't see any Korean firemen. I never knew any Korean firemen. I, actually, I didn't even know any firemen at all until I was 22 or 23. It's no wonder that there aren't too many Koreans because the Korean American immigrant culture doesn't stress public service, police, fire, EMS. It stresses typical doctor, lawyer, accountant, own your own small business. I think that if more Korean Americans were told about what it's like to be a firefighter, I think they'd be interested too because it's a great job. Seems to be the problem, sir. Trying to make you guys come out. Please. No, we're here for you. How can we help? The shoreline's backed up again. Okay. We're 
told me you guys have to come out before they can do anything else. Sure, no problem. Um, the reason we get called out to these water leaks is because sometimes the water's coming through an electrical yeah. appliance or it's coming uh, through uh, either an outlet and that's an uh, electrocution hazard. could also cause a fire. Um, so what we could do is we could isolate that water, at least mitigate the property damage a little bit. In this case, he caught it early, so he, he cut off the water himself. So we just have to verify that you know, nothing's threatened in terms of electrocution and property loss, and we're good to go. During the 24-hour shift, if we're not called out on an emergency overnight, we do stay upstairs in the dorm. You know, yesterday's shift, it's like I work with the best bunch of guys, so any day that I'm here is a great day. Um, obviously, I want to go back and see my family 24 hours. is a, a long time to be away, and at uh, 8 o'clock in the morning, you know, my shift is over, so off I go. We met at church, actually. It was the church that my husband went to, uh, since he was a child, and we both served together on the praise team. And Peter played the guitar and I sang. 15 years ago, yeah, we started dating, and uh, we got married about 10 years ago. We have two kids, a four-year-old and a four-month-old, Matthew and Ryan. They're amazing. Having children changes everything. Hopefully for the better for me, so far. Hey Greg. How you doing, bro? How are you? Come on, man. How you doing? Oh, her, uh, left arm injury. Left arm? Alright. Yeah, Any in the back. She was coming this way. Spun her. Wow, no kidding. Alright. Vehicle off in park? Yeah, it's off in park. Okay, good. EMTs will be right with you, alright? Did you hit your head? Not that I know of. I okay. did hear a buzz. Yeah, kind of loud, huh? It, yeah. All right. I yep. got a little dizzy, but I don't know if it was the fumes from the airbag. It, it kind of scared me. Well, you did the right thing by staying put. Yeah. But uh, yeah, your engines are off. Your car's in park. It's in park, and I turned it off. It was front one engine three. Car three respond. Box area fifteen dash one for two three three Spear Avenue. That's two thirty three Spear Avenue for the activated residential fire alarm. We, we might be leaving. Um, not everybody can do this. Not everybody is cut out for this. And I don't mean to exclude anybody, but at the same time, there is a huge burden and responsibility placed on that title. Um, being a fireman is one of the few professions left in America. The public trusts the fire department. They don't question what we do. They don't question why we're here. And Whenever we do our job, the public expects us to do it and to do it well. My advice to a future firefighter is make sure that no matter what you do, no matter where you go, always keep learning. Don't ever stop learning.